This is a broadcast of SmallCapVoice.com, a financial communications and investor relations firm. SmallCapVoice.com receives payment for investor relations and financial consulting services that it provides to its clients. You should assume that officers, directors, and employees of SmallCapVoice.com or financial analysts mentioned and their families hold a position and intend to trade in these securities for their own accounts. This is not an offer or recommendation to buy or sell securities. Information in this broadcast is presented solely for informative purposes and is not intended to be nor should it be construed as investment advice. As in all investments, an investment in a featured company carries an investment risk. Listeners should review the company thoroughly with a registered investment advisor or registered stockbroker. This broadcast does not purport to be a complete study of the featured company or other companies mentioned. Information used and statements of fact have been obtained from the featured company and other sources but not verified nor guaranteed by smallcapvoice.com as to completeness or accuracy. Such information is subject to change without notice. You're wired in smallcapvoice.com. Following is a presentation of smallcapvoice.com, today's leader in investor relations, capital formation, and retail support. Now, with your online business briefing, smallcapvoice.com's Stuart T. Smith. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for once again joining us here at smallcapvoice.com for our online business briefing. Where we're welcoming back to the show a company we've spoken to several times in the past, TerraTech Corp. They're traded under the ticker symbol TRTC. And we are once again joined by the Chief Executive Officer and President of the company, Derek Peterson. Derek, how are you doing? Stuart Gray, thanks for having us again. Appreciate it. Absolutely. So much has gone on with you and your company since the last time we spoke, but there was a very important update just issued by the company talking about the Nevada Medical Cannabis and National Initiatives for the company. If you would, let's get your personal insight into these updates. Yeah, we've had a, you know, 2014 was a, was a big year for us, specifically with the accomplishments coming out of Nevada. You know, we were able to secure eight permits to operate medical marijuana facilities throughout the state, both in the Las Vegas area, Clark County region, as well as uh, uh, Reno and Washtenaw County area. So a lot of our focus has been on that materializing and the things we need to do to get that off and launched. But at the same time, we have a lot of other business segments we can't ignore, and uh, we wanted to make sure that we took some time to update investors to let everybody know where we're at in the process. Well, then let's do it. Let's jump into it. Give us an update on Nevada. Yeah, we have a lot going on in Nevada, actually. Let me, let me start off with something that's been a little bit of a complication to shareholders, and that's the dispensaries within Clark County uh, and the discrepancy between receiving a state special or a local special use permit as well as a state certificate. There were a handful of applicants that did well at the state level but didn't receive special use permits at a local level. And in we just went through a uh, procedural hearing with Clark County where they didn't allow those that were approved at the state but not approved at the county to move forward. Uh, the company recently just filed a suit to Clark County. Now, the suit wasn't to slow down the process. The suit wasn't to cause problems in the industry here. We wanted a judicial review to take place in Clark County because we think there were some material problems with the process that took place here. And to get a judicial review, the only way to make that happen is actually by filing a lawsuit. So... For us, it was more of a procedural step to begin that process so we could get a fair outside third-party review and determine whether or not the process uh, violated any, any types of laws or regulations. And if that's the case, we potentially have a second shot at opening up those two additional dispensaries within the Clark County area. Away from that, we still have a lot going on throughout the state. So we've got a dispensary in Reno area that we just submitted our business license for, and we have a cultivation and production facility up in Washtenaw County. Uh, that we're working through uh, architectural plans to submit to our builders. Uh, and same down in, uh, in, in the city of Las Vegas. We have a dispensary that, uh, that's very well situated close to uh, residential as well as close to Las Vegas Strip. And we've got uh, cultivation and production facilities that we're working to build out in Clark County as well. So the issues that are, that are kind of surrounding the Clark County dispensaries are in and of themselves. Everything else is progressing and moving forward at a pretty rapid rate. What we're doing right now in most of the locations is we're finishing up the final architectural drawing and submitting those to our builders so they can put shovel to sand. But it just takes some time to get all the local permits, the building permits, so that we're able to, to begin that construction process. We anticipate the dispensaries to be open up sometime in late summer and the cultivation and production facilities to be open up sometime towards, uh, say, late Q4. 
Well, that's a lot to have going on in one state, the state of Nevada, which we know in the Green Rush area, this has been a hotbed of news for the past six months. But there's more for you and your company, TerraTech. What about Florida? Give us an update there. Yeah, I mean, Florida had a, a amendment. Uh, their amendment got shot down. They needed a 60% vote to pass a constitutional amendment. I think they came in with 57 or 58 percent. So it was very, very close. Now they have that Charlotte's Web or CBD legislation uh, that worked through, and, and there were some lawsuits that were filed and some review processes that took place. So they're not exactly certain how that's going to be implemented at this point. So we have our people down there. We're paying close attention. You know, if it's a if it's a process that we think is uh, kind of entrepreneurial, economically friendly to us, we'll jump in. We're we're ready and we're poised to to to, to work within the state. If not, we'll just wait till 2016 till there's a new amendment or new initiative on the ballot that we can work with. Well, you're very close to New York with some of your other operations right across the bay. We'll get into edible gardens here in just a little bit. But New York, what's happening there? You know, New York's uh, a big market now. They 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 are basically putting into the process uh, medical marijuana. It's a little bit different than a lot of the other states where they're not allowing the sale of the raw flowers. They're only allowing the sale of uh, extracted products, uh, which works well and bodes well for a company like us. There's not a lot of people that have the expertise to do um, you know supercritical high volume CO2 extraction uh, in, in laboratory grade facilities. Now we do that in Northern California, and we've been doing that for a while. And our team has been doing that for even longer. So we feel pretty well poised to be able to be in the New York market because of our expertise specifically around supercritical CO2 extraction. Um, so things are progressing pretty rapidly over there. We've, we've hired a great lobbying firm to make sure that our, our voice is heard and that we're represented well in the process. And we're, in the, we're at that point right now where we're building out a, a very strong advisory board and strategic crew to help us back there compete in the local market. So we're going to be competing for one of the five organizations that gets to produce medical marijuana as well as distribute medical marijuana uh, throughout the state. Fantastic opportunity. Well, what about Edible Gardens? How's that brand coming along? You know, Edible Gardens is, you know, we, it's funny because we started that company as, as a bit of a hedge to medical marijuana, right? Because when we began, it wasn't the same political environment that it is today. So we always had that fallback for us, but it's actually turned into a, a decent fundamental business for us, and, and we're continuing to grow it. So our attention is never to vacate that side of the business, and we've picked up some major key retailers last year, you know, Walmart, Marshes, Kroger's included. Uh, and now we're starting to get some good expansion out of the Midwest uh, market as well. Uh, we're adding Kroger stores on a weekly basis. Uh, at the same time, we're continuing to add additional product lineups. Uh, we just introduced a new product called the Living Salad. So it's essentially one pot. Inside that pot has multiple different kinds of lettuces, so you can literally clip it off, drop it into a bowl, and you've got an instant, an instant living salad that's as fresh as can possibly be. So that, that's a huge market for us. We're paying very close attention to how we continue to expand that brand throughout the United States as well as, again, like I said before, increasing the product lineups in, in terms of what we're selling into our, 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 our footprint that currently exists right now. Well, Derek, obviously that is a tremendous overview by you, which brings up the question with all of these different initiatives for you and your company, how is the company going to finance this? That's a good question. Um, you know, we've got great financial partners, and, and we've had some for a long period of time. And on top of that, we, we certainly get uh, contacted by a lot of people that are interested to, to fund the company and our different initiatives around the country. So that being said, you know, we've got an open S1 right now for an equity line with Magna, uh, which we've done uh, one with them prior that was very successful. One of the reasons we like the equity line so much is because it puts a lot of the control on how the shares are issued out into our hands, meaning that once we have an effective registration statement, we're actually able to choose on a weekly basis how much stock we put out and assign floor prices to it. That way, if you know we feel like it's not a good environment to trade the stock that particular week, we don't put out a put notice, or we do put out a put notice with a particular floor. So that we're registering about 57 million shares at you know 20, 25 cents. We're looking at 12, 13, 14 million dollars, depending on where we're at. In addition to that, you know we've got uh, full support from our past financial backers to. Uh, add additional funds as needed as we as we move along the process of build out. Now we don't need everything at once, which is nice because the build out takes several months over the course of 2015. So we're at the point now where we're trying to kind of build out a calendar of capital necessity throughout the year. That way we can not have to raise everything at once, but we can raise it as we need it. We don't raise any more than we need at any one given time and, and, and do any type of additional dilution if it's not necessary for the company. But we feel pretty comfortable where we sit with our access to capital. Uh, we're just trying to make sure that whatever deals that we do do are far better than the ones we've done in the past and that the financing gets healthier and healthier as we get stronger as a company. 
Music to the ears of the shareholders, I'm sure. And Derek, let's talk about the new brand that popped up, IVXX. This is a new brand. Talk to me about it. Well, you know, the, the industry is maturing so much to a point where you have a decision as a, as a medical marijuana provider to either be a commodity producer or to be a branded producer. Um, our team has had a lot of experience in the industry. Our partner, Sawa, has been in the industry for a tremendous amount of time. We've worked with some great growers that really produce a top-quality product, and the, a product that's essentially deserving of a brand. So we made a decision last year that we wanted to develop a brand that was representative of this high-quality uh, product that was being produced, especially in the California market, something that patients could really identify with. And what we saw was lacking from a national standpoint, especially even in California from a local standpoint, was a, a level of confidence that consumer had in the product that they were that they were purchasing. So was this product tested properly? Is it does it have any residual toxins or, or nutrients that weren't flushed out properly? Was it produced under the best standards? Um, those types of things, especially somebody with a compromised immune system like late-stage cancer, HIV, that can't afford to have something like that uh, put into their system. So we've produced this brand not only to, to create somewhat of a lifestyle brand, but also to create a brand that patients could be very comfortable with when they know they're purchasing it. They know they're getting one of the highest quality, most rigorously tested products in the industry. So we've put a lot of effort into launching this uh, late 2014. We have a very large launch we're going to be we're going to be coordinating probably sometime in March. The IVEX website, which is IVXX.com, should be launched in the next couple of weeks, which will give uh, brand enthusiasts as well as patients that uh, have a need to, to acquire the product a lot more information about what it is we do, how we, how we grow, how we cultivate, how we process, how we cure, how we test, et cetera, and so forth, and also where, be, where, where they'll actually be able to find the brand in the different markets that we're going to be offering the brand in. We'll also have an online store for anybody that wants IVEX branded gear to be able to pick something up as well, especially in a non-legal state, but somebody that's also supportive of the movement. So it's a big push for us for 2015. We're putting a lot of effort and energy into developing the IVEX brand further. Very cool. Once again, that IVEX website is IVXX.com. Well, Derek, finally, let's talk about NB Plants. Let's get an update there. Yeah, NB has uh, been a, a, an acquisition we were interested in, in conducting for, for quite a while now. We originally wanted to do it a couple years back, and then we found some breakup fees associated with some financing and some credit facilities that the company had. And the economics were just too significant for us to take on at the time. Now, we've waited for those to season out, and we're at the point now where that overwhelming factor has been pretty much mitigated to a degree where we feel comfortable moving forward. Now we're at the point right now where we've somewhat finished negotiations in terms of price, with the family, and um, we feel pretty pretty excited about being able to close this up in the short run. What we're waiting for right now is basically, like I said to you in the last section, was to pencil out all of our financial needs for the year so we can make sure that whatever capital we put into this doesn't, uh, doesn't defer or doesn't uh, take away from any of our projects in Nevada. So for us, it's more of a, it's more of a timing issue of when do we close an acquisition like this compared to our, our financial necessity to build out Nevada. And we're not going to know exactly what that looks like for about another 30 days till we get our build-out schedule from our construction partners and know exactly what our fiscal timeline is for 2015. Well, that's Derek Peterson once again with Terratech. That company's traded under the ticker symbol TRTC. If you'd like to speak with their investor relations, that's Bill Clayton at Independent Financial Limited. Toll free 888-603-2896. If you look at any Terratech press release, you're going to find a long list of links, including TerratechCorp.com, their Facebook, their Twitter, and everything else you need to be in the know on Terratech Corp. Well, Derek, thank you so much for your time here today. Super, thanks for having us. Appreciate it. You bet. For Derek Peterson, this is Stuart Smith saying thanks so much for listening. Smallcapvoice.com, today's leader in investor relations, capital formation, and retail support, provides its clients with the highest level of service. Our audio interviews are disseminated to one of the largest opt-in audiences available today. How? We at smallcapvoice.com believe in aligning and affiliating ourselves with other leaders within the investor relations community. By sharing resources, each affiliated firm is made that much stronger and each client is served that much better. Our focus is to identify and provide the very best financial services and solutions available to clients and their shareholders. For more information about our services, please call us at 512 267 
or visit us on the web at www.smallcapvoice.com.